This is KGW News at 11. Hello everyone and welcome to KGW News at 11. I'm Laurel Porter. I want to start tonight by sharing a picture I received featuring the thoughtfulness of a young girl in Albany. 10 year old Elena Reed attends Tangent Elementary in the Albany School District and this is her artwork thanking our essential workers. Everyone keeping things running while we do our part staying at home. Healthcare workers, firefighters, grocery workers, truck drivers, farmers, people keeping the lights on for us. And I know you can think of many others, but I also want to thank our so-called non-essential workers. Everyone who's had to stop working and stay at home for the good of others. You may be called non-essential, but you're extremely important to us and we miss you. And we thank you for your sacrifice too. And thank you, Elena. Thanks to everyone for staying at home and helping to flatten the curve. And in the name of flattening the curve, today, Washington Governor Jay Inslee extended the state's stay-at-home order for another month. It was set to end this week, but will now last until May 4th. The governor says Washington hasn't seen the worst of the virus, and the extension is needed to keep people safe. Meantime, in Oregon, there is some speculation about whether we should be able to reopen businesses. That's after a Seattle research firm put together a number of projections for the Oregon Health Authority. The firm found social distancing practices are working so well, hospitals will easily be able to handle the number of COVID-19 patients who will need help, according to one of the projections. If the numbers are right, they show that even if businesses were opened again and schools kept closed, the expected surge in cases would be something area hospitals could handle. So I'm wondering why not just open the businesses again? That's a great question. I think, um, I think we're gonna need to look more carefully at this question because of, there are real downsides that I'm aware of of keeping businesses closed. I I think that's for our elected officials. Uh, for me, that's the county chair um, uh, who are very much interested in how reliable those models are. The projections show that in a worst case scenario, patients would need slightly more than 150 intensive care unit beds. But OHA numbers show there are 291 open and available today. The researchers say it appears the infection rate in Oregon has slowed by 50 to 70%. So well done everybody with that social distancing. And speaking of social distancing, TriMet is making changes to keep riders farther apart. That includes new restrictions and guidelines for buses and max trains. Catherine Cook takes us through the updates. At the Gateway Transit Center, people getting on buses Thursday night noticed a few changes. The biggest one, TriMet is temporarily limiting the number of passengers per bus to slow the spread of COVID-19. No more than 10 people, or 15 if they include couples or riders with kids, will be allowed on board. And I think it's fair. It keeps people away from each other, and I don't think you get much uh, dispute about it. Julius Wagner rides the bus every day. He says people have already started keeping their distance from each other. Because there's not necessarily a mass number of people on the buses. TriMet says weekly ridership is down over 63% from February since the governor's stay-at-home order took effect. As ridership dwindles, there may still be busy days. To protect the 15-passenger limit, drivers can ask people at bus stops to wait for another bus if theirs is at capacity. Inside buses, riders will find more changes. Some seats will have signs that say, don't sit here, to promote social distancing. Riders on Max and West trains will also see signs encouraging passengers to keep their distance. The changes come amidst frustration from TriMet drivers. Union reps complain the agency has been slow to respond to safety concerns around the coronavirus. KGW obtained audio recordings that illustrate some of those concerns. In this one, a driver worries about big crowds and possible contamination. At one moment, I had every seat on my bus had somebody in it. Uh, yeah, I mean, the six feet is a, is a suggestion. It's the ideal to prevent the virus from being transmitted. Riders like Julius. I make sure I keep my distance. Hope these new changes will make things safer for everyone. With these changes, there may be delays, so be sure to give yourself some extra travel time. And remember, TriMet no longer accepts cash payments on buses. Catherine Cook, KGW News. Two more people in Oregon have died from COVID-19, bringing the state's death toll up to 21. There are now 826 positive cases. That's out of the more than 16,000 people tested. 
In Washington, 262 people have died in about six and a half thousand cases. About 92% of people tested have been negative. In Oregon, Marion County has become a hot spot for coronavirus. It has 164 cases, and based on population, that's the highest infection rate in the state. Officials say there are several factors behind it. Marion County had one of the first cases, meaning the virus has been spreading for weeks. Also, there have been large clusters of outbreaks nearby, including one at a veteran's home in Lebanon. Salem Health operates the only hospital in Salem and provides health care to surrounding communities, which could help drive up the numbers. The Oregon Department of Corrections announced today its first case of an inmate getting coronavirus. The patient is being treated at San Am Correctional Institution in Salem and will be moved to a 24 hour care facility. Earlier, we learned an employee at the Oregon State Penitentiary in Salem also tested positive. To learn more about what's being done to keep employees and inmates safe, visit KGW.com. Part of the Vancouver Mall parking lot is now a safe parking zone for dozens of people living in their cars. It opened up this morning. The city says it's for those who don't have a home and they need a safe place to stay and isolate. The parking zone has 40 spaces available on a first come first serve basis. There are also portable restrooms and hand washing stations. Really, we want to do this really well and demonstrate that that this is a this is a positive community program. And so um, we'll see. We're, we're certainly in unprecedented times and, you know, we're taking it a week at a time. But right now we want to make sure that this this works out for the guests and for uh, the property owner and that it's a positive community program. Staff and security are also on site 24 hours a day. New at 11, if you think dealing with a stay at home order is tough, Imagine having to deal with a senseless crime on top of it. Security cameras were rolling as several people vandalized dozens of cars in two secure parking garages in Southeast Portland's Buckman neighborhood. Mike Benner spoke with one of the victims. The Urban Air Apartments in Southeast Portland is where Cynthia Kinney has lived for about two years. She'll be the first to tell you her time here has been great, but all of a sudden she's having second thoughts. I was mad, <laughs> mostly mad. And then felt like, well, I don't feel safe. Are they going to break into my apartment? Kinney woke up Wednesday to quite the surprise in her secure parking garage. The driver's side window on her 2018 Subaru Crosstrek was broken. My first word in the parking garage by myself was the F word, loudly. And then I like slammed my car door and was like really pissed off. It's very frustrating. The tenants are frustrated. Everybody's frustrated right now. Jim Rostell is the director of sales and operations for Anchor Northwest Property Group. He says early Wednesday morning, several people broke into the secure garages at the Urban Air Complex and nearby Piccadilly Flats. Security cameras show the bad guys busting into approximately 30 vehicles. It's maddening when you watch it on video and, and, and watch these people with total disregard for other people's stuff. And really a total disregard for people in general. The owners of these cars now have to find someone to fix their broken windows when so many places are closed per the governor's orders. And on top of that, it's costly. How many people in Portland are unemployed? Quite a bit. So I don't know how they're going to afford their glass. Kinney was lucky enough to find an open repair shop and paid 300 bucks for a fix. But as she points out, I've been isolating for like two or three weeks now. Um, <clears throat> so I had to go out and be around people, which I don't want to do and go and get it fixed and drop it off. And then I didn't want to take an Uber. It makes an already difficult situation even worse. And for that, Kinney is hoping officers can track down the suspects and sooner rather than later. I hope they get caught or some type of karma. I just if it was any other time, yeah, that would be bad too, but I feel like right now it's just, obviously they're really bad people. Of course, anyone who recognizes these suspects or knows anything about the case should contact the Portland Police Bureau. In the meantime, the operations manager for these buildings tells me that when it comes to security, they're always trying to stay a step ahead of the criminals who appear to be getting more and more advanced. He says this case is proof that security measures still need some tweaking. I'm Mike Benner for KGW News. Boy, that is so maddening, isn't it? New numbers show just how much this pandemic is damaging our economy. A record 6.6 .6 million people in the U.S. filed for unemployment benefits last week, and that shatters the previous record of 3.3 .3 million claims. 
In Washington, nearly 182,000 new claims were filed last week. That's a 41% jump over the week before. Oregon saw nearly 93,000 new unemployment claims, and that is a new record. All this comes as many people are still struggling to file for unemployment. Nationally, there have been nearly 10 million layoffs in just the last few weeks. However, it is not all bad news out there. The pandemic has brought out the best in people and cases of neighbors helping neighbors. Christine Pitawanit shows us some of the heartwarming examples. So many of us are either ordering a lot of takeout to try to support our local restaurants and get some good grub too. Or you might be cooking a lot more, trying to stay indoors. Very basic setup. So today we're doing meatloaf, uh, salad and that's exactly what Casey Barkmeyer and his girlfriend Madeline Conley are doing. Just, uh, yeah, just a simple family meal and we're just, um, you know, the only difference is we just make a little bit more and we pack it in to-go containers. Those to-go containers filled with food for people also living in his southwest Portland building who need help getting meals during the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, I wanted to do something. So they posted this note in the lobby. Hi everyone. With all that is happening, I have an idea that I'm hoping will possibly help our community. You know, we live in a big building and I assume by, um, you know, there's going to be some people in this building that, um, you know, are more at risk. So far, a handful of people have reached out for help. Um, our most popular one was uh, his family's chicken marsala dish. A few have said they might take them up on the offer if their situation gets worse, but a couple people are getting help. One of the gentlemen that we cook for is uh, is is in the, the most at risk. He's over 80 um, and it sounds like he has very limited family here. And this couple's efforts are inspiring more good. That's also what helped prompt me to, to do this as well because of what he had done. Joe Conyard saw Barkmeyer's note and posted one of his own. Left a note just asking anyone if they needed help, uh, you know, with grocery shopping, going for a walk, walking their dog, just kind of letting people know that you know, you have people in the building who care. And Barkmeyer's note? I was down in the laundry room and I saw this notice on our bulletin board. Also gave Marsha McKean the inspiration to form a group of more than 20 people on the Nextdoor app dedicated to helping people in their building. And a lot of people have, have written and said, um, yeah, let me know how I can help. So what started from a single offer to cook meals for those in need? At first, I'll just be doing this in our building. Produced a domino effect of kindness. But I'm pretty sure that when we come out the other end, we're going to be more connected and kinder. Yeah, I think the takeaway here is that you never know what your good deed will inspire others to do down the line. Christine Pitawanich, KGW News. And we hope that inspires other people too.